Hi, I um, was uh, in Aldi today and I bought some chisels. I bought these um, Aldi chisels, which I've used for four or five years now, maybe, maybe not that long, but I've used them for a while. We use them in the school. They're very inexpensive. The amazing thing about them is that they cost uh, just under eight pounds, including your taxes and everything. So you walk out of the store with a set of four chisels. Typically, these are 8mm, 12mm, 18mm, and 24mm, which puts them close to the approximation of uh, just under, it's about 5 16 so it's not quite a quarter inch. Uh, and then you have a half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch chisel. Uh, and what I liked about these chisels was, well, I did like the price, it was pretty inexpensive. But the other was the fact that they had ash wooden handles, a hardwood handle, and that they were a good long chisel. They have a nice bolster on here. They hit against the wood. I don't care for the, br the metal ferrules. They don't really do anything, especially at this end. You don't really need it, but that's fine. And I don't care for guards because I think I've cut myself more putting guards on than I ever have leaving the chisels without guards. One of the nice things is generally, they don't roll on the floor, uh, but I like the, the flat points in here. So there's a lot of things that I like about these chisels. But the reason I like them in particular is that if you don't have a whole lot of money and you're just starting out in woodworking, these chisels will actually last you a lifetime. And they're fine, they're, they're fine enough here on the thickness not to be uh, over thick, not, not too heavy. The sizing is good, these are practical sizes. So that's a, um, a fraction under three quarters of an inch. Uh, it's, that one's five sixteenths of an inch. Uh, that one's just under half. And this one is just under one. So they're close enough to the size that we need. All right, so what we're gonna do, first of all, we've got to find out a couple of things about the chisel. The general overall appearance and feel of the chisel is fine. I would probably want to knock off the, the signage on it and take the um, plastic coating off the handle and maybe sand them down and put some shellac or some boil linseed oil on it. And I probably would work on these, um, uh, the back faces and the bevels a little bit with some emery paper. But what we're really going to look at now is the flatness of this face and we're going to sharpen it. So this has a single bevel on here, which is perfect for what we want. We're going to slightly alter this to put a camber on it. But what we want to do is check this face for flatness. And uh, I don't know that this is exactly what I would want. This has a slight camber, uh, I mean a, a concave on this face, which makes it very easy to flatten. This one has a slight hollow. This one has quite a big hollow, but we'll see when we get them on the sharpening plates. And that one has a hollow, which is perfect for what I want in a chisel. So that really helps me to get the chisel where I need it to be. So here's, this is the procedure. What we need, first of all, is we want this, flate, this um, back face to be fairly flat. If it's bellied, it takes a lot to get that flat, and that it's going to take you 20 minutes if it's bellied, and that's probably not too long. If it's not bellied, uh, if, it, if it's hollow like this one is, then I don't have a whole lot of work to do on it. I'll show you why, because it doesn't have to be dead flat. It just needs to be close to. Um, to get that flat, we need something that's flat, and I've got, some, um, I've got some plate glass here that I got out of the skip, out of a dumpster in America, skip here in the UK. Um, it's half inch plate, uh, it didn't cost me anything and I've got some abrasive paper on this. This could be any kind of abrasive paper, I've just used wet and dry and this works fine. So I've got 250, 400 and 800 and you don't have to go with these, you can go with anything close to and on this side I've got 1200, 1500, 2000 and 2500. These are smaller than the other sides because these are not so much for flattening but polishing out. So I don't spend a lot of time after I've got them flat. This is what's going to take the bulk of the work. These three are going to take most of the work. I also have a granite block here that is guaranteed flat and you can buy one of these 
you need one ultimately I like to have one around the shop this certifies that this is flat with it plus or minus half a thousandth of an inch so this is you know this is one that I bought for that purpose if you can't get the plate glass if you're stuck for the plate gla glass then go into B&Q and take a straight edge go to their tool department take a square and get the straight edge and offer it to the the t a tile and go through the tiles until you find one that's flat and th that would be the next stage for for me and uh, one more piece of equipment we need is a block of wood like this one and I'll show you what we need that for in a minute we don't need it right now so let's get rid of what we don't need we don't need the granite block because we're going to be using the plate glass and I've stuck these to the glass you can spray adhesive these to the glass you can just use a film of water people keep telling me that the uh, paper doesn't slip when you just use a film of water I have not found that to be true I can I use it sometimes because I'm lazy or I don't want to use a spray adhesive because of the smell or whatever but most often they do slip I found that they generally do slip so what I do is I just put a single tab of double-sided tape like this along one end of each piece of the paper the abrasive paper like this on the underside peel it off and stick it down so it's not actually stuck down in the middle because it doesn't need to be and and that is very easy to remove with a razor blade if it, if it contaminates your glass after but this will get you started so I'm using glass cleaner this is the most inexpensive uh, lapping fluid that I've come across I like it it has a pleasant smell and um, it's not um, a, an oil-based product um, so I, I kind of like it it's uh, it's perfect for this so squirt on some fluid here we'll call it lapping fluid but it's not lapping fluid it's just glass cleaner and you know water will do exactly the same I haven't found much different between any of these um, fluids and I certainly have not found lapping fluid works that effectively or more effectively so here I've got some shelf liner this is that silicone non-slip stuff plop it on there and that gives it a fairly rigid hold I'm going to take the the uh, back face of the chisel here offer it to this uh, emery paper here this abrasive paper and I'm just going to make a couple of passes like this just to see how flat we already are and I think that we're very close because already we have a hollow in here the abrasive is hitting here and the abrasive is hitting here so it's exposing a hollow here so I'm going to go with a little more fluid and then let's just con concentrate on this so about I'm using about the most of the back of the chisel here so elongate so you're getting the full length of your paper this does not have to be a complicated procedure now then this is actually enough hollow in here we're, we're already at the cutting edge we've got this whole area here and we're back here as well this doesn't affect the chisel we're getting exactly where we want you could go a little bit more if you want to and we will but you can see already this is flat enough for us to move on to a more aggressive uh, a less aggressive grit and to remove the marks left by this first level of braiding and I'm telling you this is all you need so this chisel now we've got about a quarter of an inch six millimeters from the end let's go on the next level now it's gripping a little bit more here my fingers are not gripping quite I'll polish out that face just keep going until the pain is shooting up your arm and then you know you're ready okay you see what's happening here we're getting back here you can already see I can already see the light up above even though we're only at 400 grit 
400 grit will give you a good sharp chisel. It will be sharp enough for just about everything you're doing, but we're going to go further. So I can see my pencil now is reflecting in the face of this chisel already at 400. So let's go on here. All I'm trying to do is dis de demystify this uh, process because you'll see where we are in a minute. Now we're on the 600 grit. And with every level, we've moved a little bit further from this edge. So now we're around here. This hollow here doesn't matter. In fact, it's going to help our woodworking. So it's just fine. So go ahead and take off the damp. And those are not finished with those abrasive papers. I can continue using those. And now we're going to go to the 1200 grit here. And polish this face. That's looking good. Can you see that now reflecting there? One more, 1500. Keep polishing. The more of the striation marks you get out from the abrasive, the better. So. And then 2000. So this is very polished. Now, this is way more than any woodworker needs. It. People are going to tell you things like you have to go to 20,000 and 30,000. Uh, that's Codswallop. And uh, so I'm just polishing, polishing, polishing now. This is an upper body workout. I've got all the pressure from my upper body going down into this face. Now, if you like this hollow to be out, there's nothing wrong with getting it out, but it's not necessary. You'll see in a minute, this chisel is going to do everything we want it to do. So my last grit for this level and this type of a braiding is going to be 2400 here. Oops, see this paper? This is where this method is only to get you going and get you started because these papers do rip. And if people tell you they don't, they do. The films rip. That's what makes it expensive. It's an expensive method compared to diamond plates, but when you're starting out, it's perfect for starting out. It's perfect for this. You get fresh grit every time. So there I have a mirror finish that is perfect. Can you see that now? So we've got that mirror finish. Now this is already fairly sharp, but the bevel comes from the manufacturer. They say it's sharp. In the Aldi blurbs, it's going to tell you that they are sharp. They're not sharp. And um, this is where I would go to my diamond plates. But you can do this. You can sharpen the bevels on these, um, on these plates here. I probably should do a little bit to show you how. These are ground probably to around the two and two and a half, 250 here. So if you pull this um, bevel on here like this, just keep it dead flat, as flat as you can. What that's going to do is take out the abrasion from the manufacturer. So when you've gone through that one, go to this one here. Trail the edge, you can't really push it into it. But this works fine. 
but you can see the downside of using abrasive paper but if you glue the whole back down it's less likely to do that but this works and the same on this one but I would normally do this on diamond plates so I don't have to just trail this edge but this works just fine so we're getting this macro camber now can you see this camber on here on the cutting edge all right so this is carpentry sharp now most carpenters use a belt sander not the best way 1200 or many carpenters do So this is just a natural action. I'm not trying to do this. It's just a natural action that puts this camber and polishes the edge. Now we're close in. So this is coming close to sharp. Same on this one now. feel a burn on there I think it's because it gets so small last one now we're not done yet we're going to go to a much higher level but you take a look at that and I'll show you what we're going to do next Can you see that So how sharp is sharp? That still doesn't feel sharp to me. So I'm going to show you what I do. It's got the bevel polished. Typically I use diamond plates. So I'm going to show you the system I use. There's my 250, there's my 600, and there's my 1200. And when I'm sharpening normally, I start on 30, and I push here until I feel a burr on this back edge and I'm doing the whole of the bevel not just the edge and I go to the 1200 so 600 then 1200 now then here's the thing once you've established this flat face on this back of the chisel you never polish this you never grind this face again you flip over on this 12 and you just pull like that so you pull it that push the burr from this face onto this top edge now then here's the next stage we're going to go to and what we're going to do is we're going to continue on the flat face just a little bit more this is just a block of wood actually this is old pallet wood and I've charged this with chromium oxide or aluminum oxide aluminium oxide whichever oxides they are and I just charge this surface here like this on the surface of the wood and wood seems to work best for me and then I polish this face can you see it turning black there that's the steel coming off and polishing it out like that and that has given me a super mirror finish so then I go on this side now I could go on this just a block of wood but I like a strop I use a flat strop and the reason I do is because I like the way the leather mushrooms up around my my um, macro camber my convex bevel I love the way that looks and feels so this is just a piece of leather you can get a piece of leather anywhere any craft store 
and you need something that's not hard, too hard and not too soft. And then you pull this, trail the edge, you can't go in both directions, so you trail the edge here, like this. And this is super polishing the already polished bevel. So all your upper body weight goes right down onto the back of the bevel. So you're getting the whole of the bevel. And just keep going about 30 to 40 times. Then flip over here. Keep it flat. You will not regret buying a set of these chisels. And you can do this. It's not just all the chisels. You can do this to any chisel you've got. And look what we've got now. We've got a Paul Sellers that's out of breath. No, we've got a polished face here and we've got a super, super polished bevel. Now this is sharp. This is super sharp and this will give me anything and everything I want here. The chisel should go in off the, off the edge like this. See this? And that is a sharp edge. This is a chisel that will do anything you demand of it now. Like, for instance, you've got this macro camber. Let's see what we do with this. So watch this here now. Cheapest chisels in Britain, I think. But look, and these chisels have good edge retention. They will do everything you want it to do. Okay, this is so pristine, this surface. It is so, so smooth. If ever you used sandpaper on it, you'd have to use 15,000. I didn't tell you, when I was using this um, chromium oxide, this abrasive on this, the wax one, that's about 15,000 grit, and that's plenty. I don't imagine, even in my fine furniture, imagine this and I, I know some of you cynical people out there are saying yeah that's pine and not oak well you give me the oak and you pay for my oak and I'll show you what it'll do in oak too so look at this what this camber does when you want to do a scallop I'm going this is that's it we're done really I just love what we can achieve with an inexpensive set of chisels. Beautiful.